Gunner's Daughter, Chapter 23 As day was dawning, Vigda saw that she was sitting on a lofty ridge. Above her, the mountain rose straight up into the sky, and below her ran a rapid river in a narrow valley. The boy was asleep and did not seem to have taken any hurt. Vigda thought she must try to find the way to some dwelling, but she did not know where she was, and she was so weary and heavy-hearted that she did not move. After a while, she tried nevertheless to rise to her feet, but as soon as she moved, there was a clang close at hand, and an arrow flew out between the trees and buried itself in the trunk of the spruce under which she was sitting. And while it was still quivering, a man on skis appeared where it had come from. He halted on seeing her, and his surprise was so great that he stood speechless for a moment before asking, Is anyone there? Vigdis had not the strength to answer. Then he came up to her, and on seeing the child in her arms, he was even more astonished. He was a big man, with long, fair, curly hair and beard, clothed all in skins, with an axe at his belt, a bow over his shoulder, and a spear in his hand. He spoke to her and asked how she had come thus far, but Vigdis merely sat looking at him and could make no answer. Then the boy said, They have burnt down Grandfather's house. When was that? asked the man. And where stood that house? I am from Vaden, said Vigdis. It was this night. Have you come so far this night? said the other. That was the worst journey I ever heard of for a woman. After a while he said again, You must be got under a roof. Tis but a poor house I have, but better than here. He lifted her up, put his arm, his arm around her, and was going to carry the boy. But the child held fast to his mother and would not go to the strange man. And so Vigda said she could carry him herself. The man then put his arm around her and helped her down towards the river. After a while, when he found she could scarcely, scarcely stand upright, he took off her skis, and then he carried both Vigdis and the boy and her skis a long way, and she knew little more until they came to a narrow mountain track. It led to a little hut, and there he sat her down. He said then, It has gone badly with that hand of yours, and he lifted up her left hand. Vigdis saw then, Vigdis then saw that it was greenish white and clear, like ice. He then drew off her socks and shoes and rubbed her feet with snow a long while, but that left hand still had an ugly look. At last he gave it up and led her into the hut to a bed. He gave her a drink from a horn and she fell asleep at once, though her hand pained her. Late in the evening, Vigdis woke, and now she saw that a fire was burning on the hearth, and around it sat three men, ill-clad in rags, but well-armed and bejeweled. They were the one... They were the one she had met in the forest, and two more. The pain in her hand increased, so that she was scarcely able to eat of the food the men offered her, and it grew worse and worse as the night wore on. Her whole arm was aching, and it spread to her breast. In the morning, the man she had first met, his name was Eluge, asked how she felt. Vignus answered that she had never known such pain, and asked if he thought it might mend. The man looked at her hand and thought it had an ugly look. Vigda said, Then you must help me and cut off these three fingers. Eluge looked at her for a while, but judged at last that she was right. And so it was done. One of his companions took her in his arms and held her so that she could not move. And Eluge took off the three middle fingers of her left hand. Vigda made no moan, but merely said when it was done, You are a strong man, Eluge and deft-handed, I should judge. Eluge then bound up the wound and put her to bed. She was ill for a time, but after that she began to mend and was able to tell the men all about her journey.